Hey everybody, it's your brother Noah. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Today in this video, I wanted to open it up with sharing with you guys a story that I think is really relevant to this video. And that is there's a lady whom I prayed deliverance for online, I would say a number of years ago now at this point. And this lady, I think she struggled with fear, generally speaking. And we came to the topic of, you know, her professing her Christian faith and about how her parents are not Christian. And I went on in this discussion to figure out that, you know, her parents, uh, she still lives with her parents, and they are like, you know, not just necessarily unbelievers, but they are uh, pretty diametrically opposed to Christianity. And what this lady ended up telling me, you know, is that she's going to tell her parents that she's Christian. Because I started to, you know, see a disconnect of like, you know, some reservedness of wanting to profess to them like that she's trying to avoid, you know, telling them that she wants to marry a Christian man eventually. And I started to notice this disconnect. So, you know, um, I ended up coming to the place of telling her, you know, that she essentially cannot hide her Christian faith. She came up with the plan of saying that once she's married uh, to her husband, uh, she's going to end up telling her parents that she's Christian at that point. Uh, but what I communicated to her is that it's not up for us to decide. You know, if you, dis if, if you predetermine when you are going to have to resist temptation, then temptation is going to come at a time at which you don't expect it. You know, we need to have it already made up that we are going to choose to submit to righteousness and, you know, to further illustrate in this story, I mean, you know, showing someone that you're a Christian is not merely by professing that you're a Christian. I went on in this, you know, um, call with this lady to tell her, what if your parents walk into your room and you're reading a Bible? What if they ask you about what you did today and, you know, you had to ev you, you evangelize to somebody or what if they asked you what's been bothering you recently or why are you so happy or all these different things, you know, it's just going to have to naturally come about uh, to express that you're a Christian. It's just going to naturally flow out of your life unless you try to hide it. But scrip scripturally, we cannot do that. And I wanted to share this story with you guys um, to illustrate a point that we need to have it fully made up in our mind, predetermined that we're going to submit to righteousness in order to overcome willful sin. This is one of the biggest things that is important to realize in overcoming willful sin. That's why I share this story with you today, that you can't predetermine when temptation is going to come on. You can't be on the fence about overcoming willful sin you need to have it 100 percent committed in your mind no reservations left in your mind of going back to sin and uh just to illustrate i'm not going to belabor this point too much because i've talked about it in various videos before but there's definitely a distinction in the bible and it's it's such an important distinction to make on the topic of sin the topic of walking in holiness the difference between willful sin and sin of ignorance. 1 John chapter 5, verse 17 tells us, All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not leading to death. But before that it talks about there is a sin that leads to death. So all unrighteousness is sin, but there is a sin that doesn't lead to death, and there is a sin that leads to death, as we see earlier in verse 16. And that would be willful sin versus sin of ignorance. A sin of ignorance is something you get tricked in the moment to doing, right? Maybe you stub your toe and you accidentally say a curse word. Maybe you, you know, don't forgive your friend. You don't forgive your spouse. You don't forgive your parents, but then realize, wait, I can't hold bitterness. And then you forgive that person. You know, those are things where you're being tricked into, into the moment to being in the flesh, but you're not walking in the flesh. You're not indulging in the flesh altogether, Willful sin would be things like, you know, committing a sin of adultery, committing a sin of doing blatant, doing drugs, you know, being a drug user, um, you know, would be things like willfully lying, purposefully deceiving people, you know, telling intentional lies. 
Um, these would be good examples of willful sin. Like I said, I'm not going to go over that too much. You could read about this, though, in Psalm chapter 19, verse 12 through 13. David said, Who can understand his errors or his hidden faults? Cleanse me of secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me, and then I shall be blameless and shall be innocent of the great transgression. So there's presumptuous or willful sin versus these hidden faults or these errors, you know, errors that we all might battle with as Christians, right? So with that being said, though, if you're watching this video and you're struggling with willful sin, you can't be to the point where you, you know, have even 1% of you in like, Oh, plan B, if things go really bad, I'll go back to this. I'll go back to that. No, you cannot. You need to have it fully made up that if my hand causes me to sin, I'm going to cut it off. If my eye causes me to sin, I'm going to gouge it out. For it be, it would be better to enter into life maimed than into hellfire with all of your members, like the Word of God says. And talk about deliverance ministry. That is the person who gets delivered Nine times out of ten, somebody who has that attitude. You know, there's some people, a lot of people that I talk to that are professing Christians, and I don't see this attitude. I don't see this strong conviction of, I'm not going to betray my Lord and go back to this, this, this work of the flesh, this sin, no matter what. You need to so behold the one true God. You need to so realize what Christ has done for you on the cross be, you know, um, in awe of God and who he is and what he's done for us through his son, Jesus Christ, that you get to this place of strong conviction that I'm not going back no matter what. Remember what Jesus said, you know, that Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt. Don't even look back. Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt. And I'm not preaching sinless perfectionism here as I've already communicated you know, Christians struggle with the flesh. Christians uh, will have sins of ignorance, most definitely sins of omission. But we need to be fully decided that we are done with willful sin. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day, having done all to stand. Um, having done all to stand. You know, we need to stand there for, right? We need to put on the armor of God. You need to be all ready yeah, at that place where you are fully committed. You know, it's like you were entering into a marathon. It's like you were competing in the Olympics. It's like you were comp competing, you know, in some kind of physical sport. You've been preparing. You've been putting on the armor of God. And you are completely 100% on winning. There's no other option. You know, I think about what Jesus, uh, what Peter said about the Lord Jesus Christ in response to Jesus in John chapter 6. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And when you have this strong of commitment that there's no other option, there's no option to go back, that is what will put you in an internal disposition to walk by faith in the midst of temptation and overcome in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible does say, 1 Corinthians uh, 10, 12, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. So I'm not saying we should be like Peter. Think about Peter. He said, Lord, I'll never deny you. But why did he still fall? Because that came from a place of arrogance, self-sufficiency, trust in his own ability. That's not what I'm communicating. What I'm communicating is you should be so, so, so committed to God, so humbled by what God has done for you through Jesus Christ, and so in awe of the holiness of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, that you're like Joseph in the Old Testament. And how could I sin against my God? How could I do this wickedness in the sight of God? That it's an unthinkable thing. Don't even put it in the realm of possibilities in your mind anymore. I mean, I, I, I've given this analogy on this YouTube page before, but I'm assuming, let's say, 100 or 99% of you watching this video right now would never rob a bank, right? You would, you would never rob a bank. Why is that? Why is that the case? Because robbing a bank is crazy. 
robbing a bank is insane. It's not even in the realm of possibilities. Even if you went to a bank and there was a safe sitting wide open, still you wouldn't really be relatively tempted that much because you weren't considering it. It was not in the realm of possibilities in the first place. You don't really take a good opportunity to do something with something that's not even in the scope of possibilities in your mind in the first place. Well, you need to have the same mindset towards sin that, you know, it's like robbing a bank. It's so insane. It's such a crazy idea that it's not even in the realm of possibilities in your mind. And that will literally help you to overcome temptation, right? That, that will be like a 50, that's like 50% of the battle right there. But if you're holding on to, oh, I'm just going to do this one more time and be done, you know, I might just, uh, you know, do this sin once every month or, you know, maybe I could just, you know, do it one more time and then repent for it afterwards real quick or I'll just dabble with a, a little bit. No, you need to be 100% done. I'm tired of sin. I'm done with it. I'm dying to myself. I'm spiritually, metaphorically dying to myself. You know, go and put food in front of a dead man. Go and put the the opportunity to gamble in front of a dead man. Go and, and not as though eating, but let's say gluttony. I'm just saying for the sake of the analogy. Go and put some kind of stimuli in front of a dead man. He's not going to be pulled to wanting to do it. Why? Because he's dead. We need to die to ourselves and live in Jesus Christ. And I know I've said it before, but this is commanded of us as Christians to forsake willful sin at, uh, when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ. Jesus said things like, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Uh, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. When he's saying go and sin no more, he's not saying that you'll be utterly sinless. But he's saying, go and forsake the, this lifestyle of sin, like in one of those examples, adultery. Go and forsake uh, a lifestyle of committing works of the flesh, willful sin. And that's another good way that you can define what willful sin is. Look at the list of the works of the flesh in 1 Corinthians 6, Galatians 5, Revelation 21, I think it is, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 5, I think it is as well too. Um, so guys... That's really what I'm here to communicate today, that if you're still struggling with willful sin, if you're still on the fence about it, come before God, lock yourself in a prayer closet for three hours if you have to, and just be like, God, I'm done. I need your power, God. I need you to empower me to overcome in Jesus Christ's name. Cause me to hate my sin. Cause me to fear you. God, I pray and I ask you, please give me the fear of God. Give me hatred towards sin. And this I pray for you, uh, precious saint, precious believer, as you listen to this video in Jesus' name. So that's what I'll say, guys. Um, I have other videos on overcoming willful sin, the works of the flesh. Definitely check those out if you need further inspiration. But you just got to come to the end of yourself surrender that situation to Jesus and whatever you were trying to find through that willful sin, whether it be comfort, fulfillment, some kind of stimulation to your body, you can find the true fulfillment, not even better, not, not even like, you know, living in Christ, being with God is better than that, but it is literally what your soul is actually looking for can be found in God, in, in the deep parts of who you are, who you were created to be. Um, what you're looking for is found only in God through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen, guys.